amazing devices in Fortnite Creative, but if I had to pick out the most important of all of the devices, it would be the trigger. A lot of you have wanted me to do some tutorials on how to use devices, and you'll never really be able to do anything in Creative unless you understand the trigger. So today I'm gonna reveal all of the secrets of the trigger, how to use it from basic to advanced techniques. Let's do this. Okay, we gotta start with the basics, guys, so bear with me. The trigger allows you to do just that, trigger things. Now, in order to understand triggers, you gotta understand how channels work. A trigger's only gonna work when you have it triggering on a channel. So right now, I'm gonna make this channel one. And you'll see now the trigger has channel one on it. That means this trigger is now connected to channel one. This is super basic, guys. But then you can connect it to another device. So in this case, I'm grabbing a character device. And then you'll see in the settings of the character device, once again, all of these channels. So I'm not getting into all of the details of the different devices. But here you can see you can play it an emote when receiving from a channel. I'm gonna change that to channel one. So our friend Jonesy here is gonna do a ground pound when I step on the trigger. Now these triggers are not gonna work unless you've started your game. So in order for triggers to be tested, you have to start your game. Man, this is basic stuff, guys. I hope you're all still with me. So here we go, the trigger. I'm gonna stand on it and look, look, he does a ground pound. Awesome. Just understanding that one principle is gonna let you do so many things in creative mode. Now, a couple of other really basic things about the trigger is you've got your trigger sound and your trigger VFX. Now, these I almost always disable because when you step on this, it makes this loud noise like that. Do you hear that? Versus this one, I've disabled it. It doesn't make any noise. And in most cases in your map, you don't want people to see the trigger or hear the trigger. Now, the one last basic thing is what can trigger these triggers. So deciding what can trigger this can really change what happens now. So now, because it's triggered by items, I can pick up an item and then throw it at the trigger, which will then activate the ground pound. So if you haven't really played around with triggers, I encourage you to go and like play around with what can trigger it and what can because even just having this makes it so you can make all sorts of new levels because you can trigger it different ways. Okay, now let's move on to some intermediate stuff with trigger. So I would say one of the most important things is the visibility of the trigger. You can turn it off, and so now this trigger is invisible. Now let me show you the cool things you can do with this now because it's invisible. Remember how we have it activating from an item? Well, now we can put a target down like this and then put the trigger just right in front of it so that when we start the game, now it looks like there's a target there that we have to hit in order for something to happen, which is once again, the ground pound. So making it visible and invisible now makes it so your map is way more interesting. Now, along with this visibility thing, you can change the trigger to be triggered by damage. There's another setting you also need to turn on to receive damage while invisible. So now with that on, when I start the game, and I shoot the target with no trigger in front of it, it's damaged and it disappeared. But because I have the trigger taking damage, now this is not damaged and it acts as kind of like an invisible barrier that you can't shoot through. You can make safe rooms, you can even make props, so they're not able to be damaged. There's just cool things you can do with that. Now, also, I love the invisibility because now you can have it where you can have a doorway like this and you can resize your trigger to fill that entire doorway. So now when I start the game and it's invisible, it can trigger something like I'm gonna have some uh, creatures spawn here. So my character's just casually going through here, but oh no, I triggered something and now there's all sorts of creatures. Ah! So now with invisible triggers all over the place, you can really start to dictate the experience people on your maps are having. Now, another cool thing about the trigger is that you can assign them to teams and classes. So you may have like a red versus blue map where you only want the red team to, I don't know, activate the bad guys. So you can assign team one, which would be team red, to only be able to activate this trigger. And then you can assign team blue to say team two, and then only they can activate this trigger. You can do the same things with classes, but I'm not getting into classes and how to set up teams. I'm just showing you that you can make it so only certain people can trigger triggers that you have defined. Now, one last setting for the intermediate portion is how many times you can trigger this trigger. You can define if it can be triggered 10 times or one time or whatever. And you'll want to know that because maybe you only want to trigger the zombies once. And then after it being triggered once, that trigger then becomes inactive. Okay, now let's get into some more advanced settings. One is the transmit every X triggers. So I'm gonna move this up to five and I'm gonna have like, a supercomputer here that I have to destroy in five hits. So I'm just gonna resize my trigger to be the exact size of my object here. And place it right on the front. And I've got an explosive here on the back that triggers when it receives from channel one. But it's only gonna receive from channel one when I hit this five times. Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And while this example that I use is very simple, you can use this setting to do some really advanced things. Let me show you an example on my Legend of Zelda map here 
I made a long time ago. This is a complete recreation of the original Legend of Zelda. But there are seven or eight dungeons like this around the map, and you have to collect those seven Triforce pieces. Uh, I'm sorry, it's eight Triforce pieces to unlock this gate. Now, how does this gate unlock? You'll see there's an explosive here that'll blow it up that's triggered at a certain period. I had to set up an advanced mechanic for that to work. But when I collect one of those Triforce pieces, this sequencer here activates and then it checks these triggers. So this trigger right here is the most important. Every time that sequencer comes up and hits this, it triggers it, but it can only be triggered seven times. So then what happens is every time this is triggered, this stops, but after seven times, then it comes over here and triggers this one, which can then explode our gate here. I know this isn't a great example of transmitting every X triggers. This is an example of how powerful these different settings when used the right way can make for really cool mechanics. Okay, now let's talk for a second about the delay setting. So I'm gonna set this to delay for three seconds. Now the way this works is once this has been triggered, it waits three seconds to send out another signal. Down here, I'm gonna have it trigger on channel one when it's triggered and then trigger when receiving from channel two as well. So right over here, I have another trigger that's gonna trigger when receiving from channel one and then trigger on channel two. This also has a three second delay. So these are gonna kind of go in between each other, keep triggering back and forth every three seconds. And then what I'm gonna do right here is set up a little sequence using trick tiles that triggers when receiving from the different channels. So green's gonna trigger when receiving from channel one and it's gonna reset when receiving from channel two. And then I'm gonna do the opposite for the red square. The trigger when receiving from channel two, but resetting when receiving from channel one. Okay, so then when we start our game here and we like activate our trigger, then every three seconds it's going to change like go back and forth. So now we've got this really cool little level where you have to wait the right timing and jump. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm not very good at this yet. Oh, <laughs> I keep falling down. And if you don't like the speed of that exchange, then you can just come into your trigger and make it every one second or two or whatever you want. And this really cool level here going back and forth is all powered by these two triggers. And you can also see here, guys, why I always turn off the sound effects because this is just annoying going back and forth. But now this is like a really challenging new level that you could build you couldn't before you knew these tricks with the triggers. So as you're starting to see, it's all about combining triggers with devices. When you do that, you start getting really cool things like animation or the ability to recreate movie scenes or even working ATSTs. When you really start to figure out how triggers work, the possibilities really open up in creative mode. Things get really, really fun. And so one of the biggest secrets when working with mechanics or triggers in general is just getting into it and playing around. You'll notice on my channel, I love to play. And the more I play around with the different devices and settings and triggers, I start to learn the true possibilities of the things that we can do. It's about learning the fun things you want to create and then figuring out how to do that using the mechanics we've got. So get into it. Start playing with the triggers. Set a goal to create a fun level like this and you'll be surprised at what comes out.